Well, hi there. I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about leadership and engineering. Hey, in this video, I'd like to say a few things about the topic of mentoring. Now, uh, as we always do, let's start with the literature. So there's a, a pretty good book on what's called organizational behavior. By the way, if you're a new manager, it's a, a book. It's expensive. If you will read through that, you'll be amazed how many um, issues that addresses. But anyway, it's Ivankovic and his friends, um, and they have a few things about mentoring. But the first thing he mentions, just a fun little interesting thing, you know, the term comes from Greek mythology and the idea as a mentor was a, this trusted and experienced advisor, and that's still kind of what the general idea was. At any rate, they have, uh, they talk about eight ways to be a great mentor. So if you wanted to mentor one, and they, they have an interesting way they start. They start off by saying, you know, understand how much fear the person has. So it's the idea that as a mentor, you know, it may be a little intimidating. You know, you're some some boss and this person, they're like, oh, you know, and, and, and to, to realize that that's fearful. And also just to realize that as, as you know, a young person comes to the workplace, it, that's just a little bit scary. So the one thing is to be sensitive to the fact that the person you're mentoring probably has got a little bit of fear here and there. A second one is uh, great mentors uh, aren't afraid to be honest. You know, um, the idea is not to, you know, present this Hollywood image, but to, 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 to um, be honest about the things you struggle with, the mistakes you've made, and so on. Uh, third one is, one way to be a great mentor is to get a mentor yourself. Um, fourth, and this for me, I, I experientially is, is very important, is it's very important for the mentor and mentee to come to terms with your style of intervention. Now, that's a highfalutin way of saying, you know, basically what mentoring is, is you're speaking truth into somebody's life. And, and if, you know, if, if you're not free to do that, it's not a mentoring relationship. And you guys need to kind of agree that, hey, I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I'm going to give you feedback. This is how. And there is an expectation if you're the mentee that, you know, you, you listen, you know. But uh, to talk about how that's going to happen, you know, mentoring relationship without feedback is not mentoring. Um, another one, you know, is to, is to not keep your feelings bottled up. That, that's similar to the second one about, not, you know, don't be afraid to be honest, where, you know, um, you know a lot of the people I've mentored, I'm, I'm quite proud of. And, and, you know, it's very important for, as a mentor, to, to express that and tell them how proud you are and, you know, things of that nature that you... You you know you you see these things and as as you know as you're as you're, you're proud of them and, and and feeling very confident in them you know articulate that and a sixth one you know sometimes as a mentor you may not realize the lasting uh, impact you're having you know I mean if all things go, things go well you know the person you mentor will be talking about you thirty years later I mean the guy who mentored me in my first engineering job Mike Nolan you know that was. 30 years ago, and I still, you know, mentioned his name with a, with a great degree, degree of, of reverence. And, you know, I've never asked him this, you know, but it might be interesting sometime to ask him, hey, did, did you realize how significant that was for me? And, and that's just important for you to realize is, you know, if you're a mentor, you know, don't take that lightly. That, that is a very important role. One of the guys that I've been uh, kind of in the mentoring relationship for over a decade now, Dwight, uh, he recently got married, and he asked me to officiate his his, his wedding. You know, so I went and got certified and, and did all the you know I pronounce you man and wife. Uh, the the point is, it you know it highlights the fact that yeah, as a mentor, you're a very significant person in your life. Um, you know, with, with uh, uh, as a mentor, it's important to to build trust to help them trust you, and it's important for you to trust them. And uh, finally, is to recognize, you know, the nature of any relationship is, is dynamic. You know, this, it's not just that they're going to be changed, but you're going to be changed. And the thing I like to say, particularly I mentioned Dwight a second ago, is, you know, in the uh, <clears throat> acknowledgement section of my dissertation, I pointed out that, you know, I, I think I learned more from Dwight than I did from anybody I've ever, uh, that, that was ever, you know, I, I mentored him, and yet somehow I learned more about leadership from him than I did about people who, uh, did from people who, who mentored me, and, you know, it's, it can be very transformational. Uh, Vonkovic also has a couple of interesting things. Notes that there's a, a life cycle associated with mentoring, so, you know, at first there's kind of this initiation phase where you're sort of, you know, getting to know each other and all that, and then the, the cultivation, that's where you're really deliberately working at 
you know, mentoring and meeting regularly and, and all these sort of things. And uh, then normally in the relationship, there is a separation where, uh, you know, it sort of ends and then finally a, a redefinition. And as I think about my mentor, Mike Nolan, you know, um, I worked for him for seven years and that was really just an amazing time. And then I, I uh, went to a different department and went to a different company and then ended up back at Tandem. And I mean, not Tandem, I was at Parker. And when I came back, um, you know, I was working with Mike and then the really interesting part of it is I ended up being his boss. And, uh, you know, that just makes the point that, you know, it it's, can be very natural for these um, things to, to sort of reverse. And a lot of the young people I mentor here at Tandem, you know, are now the managers. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just part of the deal. All right, turning to Gary Uchel, he's got some insights. He says, you know, uh, his or the data that they looked at, uh, researchers found that mentors are actually usually not your boss. It's actually uncommon to have your supervisor be your mentor. It can be, you know, sometimes it's a couple levels up or a different department or something like that. <clears throat> um, the uh, other thing that Uchel points out is the research suggests that being a mentor actually helps you develop your leadership skills, that the mentoring relationship is is an ideal place to hone those skills and learning to interact. And, and um, it's also, it's likely to increase your job satisfaction. And, uh, you know, it's just, there's just a lot of positives to being a mentor. And a final thing that the, the, the data shows is that, uh, and we kind of intuitively know this, but there is actually data on this, is informal mentoring usually is much more successful than formally. I mean, this idea of, hey, we're going to, have a formal mentoring program at our company and we're going to assign people and okay no okay first of all assigning mentors that is the worst idea ever there needs to be a little bit of uh, sort of chemistry and people who are sort of naturally friends i mean the idea you you can you can say hey i'm going to assign this person to be a coach you can say hey i'm going to want you to train him i mean you know but the mentoring relationship when done properly it's you know typically you, you mentor you know one, two, or three people over a, over a 10-year period, you know, it's not something you can um, dictate. It's not something you can program and schedule. It, 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 it really works best when it just sort of happens. Um, one of my favorite authors is a guy named Howard Hendricks. Now, he writes in a lot of his work, he looks at, at um, some work from the, 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 the wise people of the past. And so he, when he talks about this, he talks about um, some key players in the, uh, in the New Testament. There's a, a book called the Book of Acts, and that's sort of the history of the early Christian church. And, of course, one of the, the big guys in the stories, and about two-thirds of the book, is a, is a guy named Paul, the Apostle Paul. You've, you've probably heard of him. And uh, he was this leader that, that founded a whole bunch of the, the churches all around um, uh, you know, Europe and Asia, and, uh, you know, Asia Minor and all that, <clears throat> Middle East. And uh, what you discover is he had, there was a young, he had a young protege, Timothy, who was probably in his late teens, that he would travel with Paul. And Paul definitely was mentoring Timothy. And so Paul was uh, Timothy's mentor. And, uh, uh, you know, Timothy was Paul's mentee. But also what you see in the book is that Paul had a friend named Barnabas. And it wasn't that Barnabas was mentoring Paul. It wasn't that Paul was mentoring Barnabas. They were just simply friends in it together. And so Howard Hendricks' point is, he says, he says it this way, using all that information. He says, you know, everybody needs a Paul, a Timothy, and a Barnabas. And, and what he's trying to say is, ideally, everybody should have somebody over him like a Paul who's, who's mentoring you. Everybody should have somebody under him who's like a Timothy who you're mentoring. And, and you, you definitely need a best friend at work. You need someone um, who's your Barnabas who just... Uh, and here's how Harvard and Hendricks says it. He says, the key uh, requirement for a Barnabas is it's got to be somebody who's not impressed with you. Who's just, who just you know, uh, who, and, you know, it's, it's a friend. It's, it's someone you like, you know, but it's someone who won't be in so much awe that they won't speak truth to you as, as a friend. All right. And so uh, here's my observations from practice. So I've just told you what's in the, the research, you know, in the literature. Now I'm just going to switch to, well, I, I have studied the literature, but but also I've been, you know, an engineer for 35 years and 25 of that in management. And here's just what I see as, as, a, practi as a practitioner who has, who there are a lot of people who would say I was their mentor. Um, so one is, and it gets to that, that there's a lot of people. One is I wouldn't presume 
to have a mentor. Uh, you know, really, I've only meant at, at Tandem, I've mentored, you know, 12 years, I've mentored probably five or six people. I've heard a lot of people at Tandem refer to me as their mentor, and I'm always like, uh, yeah, no. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is maybe we had only a little bit of contact. That, that doesn't really meet what a mentor is. And more significantly is there's uh, one person I heard about a, six months ago refer to me as their mentor, and I'm like, Wow, you, every time I tried to give you feedback, you you would just argue and not have any of it. And, and you know, that's not a mentoring role. If, if the mentee, if the mentor is not free to speak and speak truth in your life, that's that's not mentoring. You know, so I think maybe they'd be better off calling me a role model or something like that, but but not a mentor. <clears throat> okay, point number two, and it's related to some of what I just said is you know it's absolutely essential if you want a mentor, you have got to give your mentor. The freedom to speak truth into your life. You've got to tell them, hey, I do want to hear it. And let me tell you, the first time they tell you something, you got to take it and you got to thank them. If you argue, if you have a fit, if you do all this stuff, you're never going to get any more feedback. You know, if you're serious about this mentor thing, you listen to what your mentor says because otherwise, you know, the, otherwise the mentor's just going to like, yeah, whatever. You know, it's okay. Um, another one is, you know, the basic premise here is that the mentor knows more. You know, you don't try to be his or her equal. If you think they're your equal, like, don't, that's not what a mentor is. That's a friend or, or who knows what it is. But, but I, I do, there's a, a young engineer here, every time I, I talk with him, he just seems to spend all his time trying to establish that he's my, my equal. And, you know, I just kind of, <laughs> a couple of years out of college and you're just like, well, okay, well, uh, related to that, you know, um, I would say in general, you can't mentor people who are your own age and own stage of career. And see, the idea is you're, you're drawing from this wealth of experience. So, you know, if you've, you know, got 10 years experience, you're looking to mentor people who have two years experience or no experience. Or if you got 30 years, you're looking to mentor people with 20 years or, or two years or whatever. But, but, um, I, there was another person here who I hired two people at the same time and they were in approximately the same role. And, um, the one would always say, tell, report that, that that person's mentoring the other, you know. <laughs> you guys started on the same day. What are you even talking about? That's just ridiculous, you know. It, you, you're challenging because you're your friends, you know, but the mentor, no, I don't think so. Um, a fifth thing is, you know, and I, I guess I mentioned it above with, with Howard, when I was talking about Howard Hendricks' stuff, is, you know, everybody needs a Barnabas. It's very, very important that you have a peer or someone that you trust. It seems to work best. I mean, at Tandem, I've had a couple but couple of these guys, both of them actually were in marketing, if you can believe that, but uh, Stuart and, and then Jim, you know, close friends where we just, we would, we would talk, we challenge each other, you know, when I was losing perspective, they'd say, hey, we'll snap out of it, or if they're losing, losing perspective, I'm telling them to snap out of it. And then finally, everybody needs a Timothy. So, you know, one thing we know about leaders is that leaders develop other leaders, and so, you know, it'd be an odd thing if you had a baseball player who couldn't throw a baseball, I mean, that would be like, you're missing a, crit a crucial skill. And, uh, I mean, I guess you could still be playing baseball. You could just, well, you could be designated a hitter in the American League. I mean, I guess that's what there is. But, but you know, you, you would think, like, something's wrong with that baseball player. They can't throw. Well, uh, that's what it's like when you have a leader who doesn't develop other leaders. Like, something's messed up. Yeah, maybe you're getting by, whatever. But, but if you frame it this way, are you being the best you can be, well, if you're not developing other leaders, it's absolutely the case that you're you're not being the best you can be. At any rate, those are my thoughts on mentoring. Hey, I've got a whole bunch of videos. You go to TomArtsConsulting.com. There's some pull downs you can look there. If you're just on YouTube, what you can do is you can search on Dr. Tom Ulrich. That seems to find most of my videos. Um, you know, I was hoping you could search on engineering leadership guy and find my stuff, but that, that search aliases to all kinds of people. By the way, it's great to search that because there's a lot of really good videos out there. But anyway, TomArchConsulting.com. I'll keep cranking these things out. And uh, at any rate, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich. Uh, I like to talk about leadership and engineering, and we will talk to you next time.